So I'd like to int introduce myself. My name is Jaylene. I am an Indigenous, two-spirit, transgender human being. I always love saying that. And two-spirit program research coordinator with CBRC. And I have to tell you, coming off of two days with our two-spirit symposium, we were able to truly experience an energy of such heart share. And I think when I was invited to open up this, this presentation, I feel called to say that I want to carry that energy and share it with all of you. <clears throat> because I feel that that is going to really set the energy in this space mm -hmm. to realize that we're coming together to share experience, strength, and hope that we can continue to expand what the resources for our communities look like and how we can show up and make sure that they're accessible and that they are, are truly not just words, they're actions. And I love that. I think one of the things that has been uh, so amazing for me is to be working alongside uh, a group of amazing dedicated humans and myself uh, you know I'm a drag queen and uh, I've been part of thank you. thank you thanks mom no no I've, I've been part of community for for many years and I tell you that's where it, it, it truly saved my life it was an extended family that allowed me to really get to know who I was and when I found that out I was able to stand in that truth with confidence and realize that my vulnerability truly is my strength and I continue to learn and that is exciting, there's nothing wrong with that. And I, I, I always remember coming into this world feeling like, oh, it's made very clear that this world is not for me. And when I think back at that, I, I'm, I think about making sure that I'm truly kind with, with my soul. And with that, I can extend that to you. And I can say to you, when I'm in a space, it is going to be safe and it's going to be brave. I want you to feel safe to be you. And so when we come together at this magnitude, and the fact that we can come together after the pandemic where we were forced apart, our power is when we're together. So the fact we're coming here, I'm so excited to be able to hear the presentations because there are people that are, are coming here to share their power and our lived experience is so diverse and we need to hear everyone's stories. <laughs> I love that. That's our two spirit, uh, you, you hear those. And that, that is like an exclamation mark of spirit. Can you do it again? Thank you. Thank you so much. At this point, I'd like to introduce um, um, two relatives to come and, w and um, welcome us um, to this land. I'd like to introduce Bo Baker and Norman, Norman Guerrero. Mm. I'd like to bring them here from the Squamish Nation, and they will be starting us off with a welcome. Hot squile to know up. Say, um, say, I, eh, to say, oh, what shit. On hot squalo and shit, quis quach know me up. Tinat, eh, on hot squalo and shit, amen. Quis lek know me up, eh, to ti, not to quest so oath to meoch. Satalton, queen, quishamin, Norman Guerrero, queen, sna, eh, nith, keols, qui quishamins, Bo Baker, quis nas, amen. Tina chitla humalchistin o humeoch skotmish chit. Chitwa tsitsiakostai to skotmish o slolem tinat quis tlek nomiap. Good morning, everyone. We have good feelings to see that, see, see that you have all arrived safely. <clears throat> We would like to welcome you to our traditional terries of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam territories. This is my cousin Satalton. I am Kales. We come from the Capilano village. We are a Squamish nation. 
<clears throat> we would like to welcome you here with a traditional Squamish song <clears throat> from one of our ancestors, Sukwaliat, and it's called Greeting of the Day. I think right now it would be a great time for everyone to take a deep breath in and release it. Hmm. That feels good. It feels great. I think that I just want to reiterate the importance of bringing that energy from the shares that we've already had the last two days. And I also want to recognize that CBRC has made a commitment to um, create the Two-Spirit program, which has been some really great work that we're so proud of and it continues to expand and reach to our relatives in remote areas, to our rel relatives that are incarcerated, to, to a whole lot of people that are looking to um, find each other. And I, I just, I love that because uh, I've been able to meet some, some new friends uh, and I think that these are relationships that we're going to continue to foster. And that's what it's about, is I encourage people, there's a, there's a lot of presentations going on and a lot of information, but some of the most impactful words that you're going to experience are going to be when you're talking in the lobby with your new friends. So reach out to somebody you don't know, have that conversation. That's the medicine. That is going to be something that you're going to take with you into your work. And there's people that have traveled from all over to be here with us today. So uh, I, I look forward to hearing some of the magical uh, stories. I know we had a big drag show last night here. 
Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. And I was like, somebody told me, this is the biggest compliment. It's like, I was in the elevator and they were talking about the show that you had here. And it's like, and they didn't have to say nice things, but they did. So I love that. And, you know, this is something too. It's like when you actually have a group of people that create this space and they all, uh, they have um, great leadership, then they're able to, um, to do the roles that they've been, um, that they've chosen to do. And when we all do that, you need to enjoy the experience because it's all going to fall into place the way it's supposed to. That is spirit guiding. You're, we're all in the spaces that we're supposed to be and in the roles we're supposed to be, and we, we all lift each other up. So speaking of lifting each other up, I have a relative here. It's like, I'm like, a, I was like fangirling for many years because when I was a, when I was a young little what, I don't even know what to explain that, but when I was, I guess when I was young, I was um, part of an organization called the Greater Vancouver Native Cultural Society, and I was an elected representative of the Two-Spirit community as Princess 27, Elder Princess 27. And um, this was uh, an, in an amazing organization that helped our relatives who were coming to the city from the reservations or are just coming in to community, um, the 2S LGBTQ community at large, and um, they needed that support and that family. And um, Annie Moose is, uh, is um, my, I'm going to introduce Albert McLeod, but I knew this, this figure called Annie Moose, who was one of the, the founders of that organization. And the fact that I, I was watching and, and seeing a lot of the work that they're doing uh, for our, our two-spirit kin all across Turtle Island and being such a leader and making sure to hold people accountable to, to that our two-spirit presence is there and that we're aware of the work that needs to be done, I didn't realize this was the same person. And then I put two into, I was like, oh my goodness, this is Annie Moose. And so now we get to come to gatherings like this and we get to walk alongside each other and we get to share history, but we also get to share the importance of making sure that we're visible with, with who we are in our lived experience and allow people to see us. So when they see us, they know there's a space for them and that's what we continue to do together is we show up, we share our stories, we share what we learn. And it's interesting too because my role is called the Two-Spirit Research Coordinator and I heard it at a, at a share last week. It says, my role is helping people tell their story. I understand that. And I think, not coming from an academic background, but from a really rich lived experience, I think my intent is to show up to help people to feel that they can tell their story so that we can make our communities stronger. And I, I love that. And you know, this is a journey. And I, I think that when anybody says that we are going to um, do the efforts to help in make it accessible to the indigenous culture, and make sure that we're reaching our kin together in a way that we can understand and in a way that is, doesn't feel like it is um, being uh, something that isn't authentic. And I truly, I, I love that. So I, all this came up to me just, just thinking about, about Albert who has been a leader in this. Albert McLeod is a status Indian with ancestry from Nisich Away Asik, Cree Nation, and the Métis community of Norway House in northern Manitoba. He has over 30 years of experience as a human rights activist and was, was one of the founders of the Two-Spirit People of Manitoba. Albert began his Two-Spirit advocacy in Winnipeg in 1986 and became an HIV-AIDS activist in 1987. He was the director of the Manitoba Aboriginal AIDS Task Force from 1991 to 2001. In 2018, Albert received an honorary doctorate of laws from the University of Winnipeg. He was also a member of the subworking group that produced the Missing Murdered Indigenous Women Girls Two-Spirit LGBTQQIA Plus National Action Plan report in 2020 to 2021. Albert is a member of Team Thunderhead, the Canadian winners of the international competition to design the 2S LGBTQI plus National Monument in Ottawa. 
scheduled to open in June 2025. Albert lives in Winnipeg, where he works as a consultant specializing in Indigenous peoples, cultural reclamation, and cross-cultural training. Please welcome Albert McLeod. Thank you, uh, Jaylene, and uh, welcome everyone to this uh, treaty territory of uh, the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Uh, I come from uh, Winnipeg now, where I live and work, uh, mostly amongst the Ojibwe people, who are the prominent cultural indigenous group in southern Manitoba, and uh, they have really uh, saved my life in many ways as a queer person by sharing their knowledge, their their history, their culture, their ceremonies, and most importantly, their life philosophy. I worked with an Ojibwe language specialist who passed away, uh, sadly, uh, last November, Roger Roulette. And he was uh, an interpreter, a translator, uh, and a philosopher about the Ojibwe worldview. And one of the things he shared with me is that how Indigenous people perceived the human being, the infant born at the time of birth, is that child possessed a purpose, a role, a destiny, and a divine gift. And that's why we are here today. We all have these divine gifts. These are the gifts that have been given to us by our ancestors from wherever we come in the world whatever society, culture, nation, we are the modern representation of our ancestors. That's why some of us want to be artists, actors, researchers, ballet dancers, astronauts, drag queens. That's the gift, right? And some of us carry multiple gifts. Some of us are academics. Some of us are lovers, right? Those are gifts. <laughs> so what Roger was saying, uh, from the indigenous worldview, we did not judge creation. We did not preconceive what that infant's life would be. We accepted it in totality because we did not understand everything about creation, right? And we never will. You know, we're the last creation, the human beings. We will never understand the totality of the universe, this planet we live on, the sciences. We can only do what we do, right? So I came here in 1979 on a train, leaving Winnipeg because there wasn't really a gay community there. There was a lot of racism back in the 70s. And people talked about Vancouver as being the Hollywood of Canada where you could come here with your fantasies, and if you helped Vancouverites with their fantasies, they would help you with yours. And that is very true, let me tell you. So, um, as Jaylene said, I quickly uh, was uh, a member of the Greater Vancouver Native Cultural Society, which was an indigenous queer organization, kind of modeled on the Dogwood Monarchist Society, which is the Royal, Royal Society here. And it was what Jaylene said, it was a place of recognition of who we were as Cree or Ojibwe or Dene or Lakota peoples from across this nation who had done the same thing, run from homophobia, run from violence, run from transphobia and find a safe haven, which was Vancouver in the, in the day. So I arrived here in 1979 which is 46 years ago. Now hear me out. <laughs> I know you're all younger than 46, many of you. <laughs> but for me, it's a, just a blink of an eye, right? 46 years ago and coming to Vancouver. I arrived here with, for, with $40 in cash and I stayed until 1983, right? Then I went back home to Manitoba because HIV was identified in the queer community here, gay and bisexual men. And I thought I could outrun HIV, just as many of us thought we could outrun COVID, right? Uh, but uh, HIV finally 
was diagnosed in Winnipeg and across Canada, across North America and across the world. So that is our history, right, of the queer liberation movement in North America. It is the queer response to the HIV pandemic, you know, 43 years ago. And that intersects with our response to the COVID-19 pandemic as well, right? So those are intersecting pandemics that we've all survived. But I just want to acknowledge those people who were involved in the early days of the Greater Vancouver Native Culture Society. Uh, Georgina Ross, who was a very famous drag queen here in the late 70s. Neil Wilson, Mama Karen, Joy Portras, Mother Dixie, Nellie Nelson, Laurie McDonald, an anonymous lesbian youth who committed suicide in Vancouver, having come from the north, and I never uh, caught her name. Donnie James, Brian Reset, Trash, who was I think the bartender at Neighbors, right? Trash, yeah. Trash, <laughs> Peter Biggs, Sarah Blanket, Hazel De Pontiac, Jamie Lee Hamilton, who passed away a couple years ago, a trans activist, Pussy Galore. Gina Hormone, Ruby Dennis, who's in the room with us here today. Uh, Empress Tiny from the Dogwood Monarchist Society, and T Tiny just passed away, I think, last year. And Empress Olive, who was the Empress, I think, in 1980, who just has a documentary about her life uh, released this year. Albert Constant, Lou Crate, Dusty, Cunty Connie from Regina. <laughs> Ray Sill, Finnegan, Roy Donacy, Leroy Bear, Terry Gawa, Leonard Johnston, Frederick Hainolt, Iris Carrington, we all know Iris Carrington, right? B.B. Bear, Michael Green, Nancy Nevish, who just passed away a couple years ago, Hilda and Norman, who are the waiters uh, at the, uh, one of the hotels we used to frequent here, Satoshi Matsui, and Ted North, the first Empress of Canada. So those are the people of my generation. And when that drum was sounding, that's what it symbolizes. We are calling into the spiritual world, the natural world, but the world of our ancestors. These are our ancestors, right? These are the ones who made the path so we could be here today in Vancouver, right? Uh, recently, we see the hate uh, across uh, the U.S. that's now bled into Canada with these movements about education, schools, elementary, junior high, and high school, where parents are saying, protect our children from being exposed to alternative uh, information about gender, gender theory, sexuality, like being gay or lesbian or bisexual. And so many of us have been on our legislative steps, advocating and act, being activists, right? Because this is what this is about research. Our research is about telling the truth, the facts of our history as a democratic society, our legislation and our policy that protects all of us as citizens of our nation, right? We pay taxes, <laughs> we vote. People should not be discriminating against us in the 21st century. So in the future, many of us will be on those legislative steps, advocating and speaking our truth about this history of Canada and our human rights. So, um, so for me, uh, in my journey, uh, when people say protect our children, we are your children, right? We are your children. My identity as a feminine male became real to me when I was about five years old. I wasn't even in school, right? I was in my community in with my family, right? So these parents about protecting their children are really about conversion therapy. 
They're weaponizing our schools, elementary, junior high, and high school, because conversion therapy is illegal in Canada as of 2022. So they're wanting to circumvent those laws, and they want to make our schools the sites for conversion therapy, to being heterosexual, to being binary, right? And we cannot let that happen, because that is a crime if that happens in our country. So some of us will be standing up and advocating and speaking. I just want to speak about that invocation to the spiritual world. And it exists around the world, not just among indigenous peoples, is the belief there's another dimension beyond the literal, the present, the time that we're here in this room where we are conscious. Many cultures know that we can call upon that world. We can call upon our ancestors to help us and guide us at this time. Right? And we do it humbly. We do it with tobacco in case of indigenous people. It's a dried plant. Most people wouldn't even notice. That is our offering to the power of the natural world, the power of the spirits, the power of our ancestors is some dried, crumbly little plant. Other cultures have gold and diamonds and fabulous gifts to their deities. Ours is very humble, a dried plant, right? But powerful in itself. In our territory, in the prairies, and I was part of the Two-Spirit Sundance, the first North American Sundance that was organized, conceived, and delivered by Two-Spirit people, right? And in that dance, a tree is brought into the center. That tree is personified in that tobacco is offered to that tree, that that tree would join us as human beings. Because that tree connects to the spirit world. Those dancers are sacrificing for wellness, for health, for justice, for those four days they're dancing. And there's four doorways in that lodge. One, only one is physical, just like this room, right? The other are metaphorical, mental, emotional, and spiritual, right? And that's the journey we're all on, especially in research. It's just not data. It's just not conversations. It has to include the spiritual component. So at that tree, they will bring you in and bring you to that tree. And they have eagle fans, and they will brush you down with the energy from that tree for whatever you're asking for. And then you leave. So that, that was the Two-Spirit Sundance. And I had the opportunity to be at the New York Pride. World Pride was in New York in 2019 and I had the opportunity to march in that march. It was 42 blocks long. And the Canadian delegation, we made 20 blocks. The New Yorkers finished, because they walk all the time. Canadians, not so much. <laughs> but um, they had a, a session after of Two-Spirit leaders. One was Ron Raoul. And he was the executive director of the National Native American AIDS Prevention Center for a number of years, and they invited him to speak. And I just want to share with you what he said. He talked a little bit about his career, and then he said, you know, he says, I'm 70 years old now. And I said, I look out and see you in this audience. And he said, the most important thing I can offer you is a blessing. Right? To bless you, your birth, your relationships, your family, your career, your future. That you receive that energy from that tree. You are bathed in that healing energy, that powerful energy to protect you through your life. Because these are dangerous times, right? Many of us will be on those steps advocating fighting for our rights again, right? So that's what I want to leave you with this morning. 
is a blessing, that you are all blessed with that power of the natural world, the power of the spiritual world, and the power and the love of your ancestors from wherever you may be in the world, right? And to carry that blessing with you forward into your work, into your career, into your relationships, and share that blessing with your children and your relatives. So miigwech, everybody. Just hearing all those names and, and thinking about our history and, and the people that came before us to make sure that we continue on the path to our freedom. It's so inspiring, I, I tell you. Um, just breathing in all that beautiful spirit. Thank you so much, Elder Albert. I'd, I'd like to bring to the stage now um, our leaders um, for CBRC and also the Two Spirit program here. Uh, are Michael Quagg, CBRC's Executive Director, and Jesse Dame, the Director of Two-Spirit Health, to give an update on CBRC's path towards truth and reconciliation. Thank you so much, Jaylene, and thank you to Bo, Norman, and Elder Albert for your words and your wisdom and for helping us to get this panel and the summit off to uh, a really great start and in a really good way. Um, and good morning to all of you. It's so wonderful to look out in the crowd and see so many familiar faces, folks that have, uh, from, that we've worked together uh, uh, for years um, in queer trans and two-spirit research programs and advocacy. Um, but also to, to see so many new faces representing our youth and elders, indigenous, black, and people of color uh, communities and people representing such a rich diversity uh, from all corners and regions from this country. Each year, the CBRC team works incredibly hard to build a more intentional, diverse, and collaborative space that queer leaders and researchers and service providers community members and organizers can come together and support each other to make a difference in our, in our communities and looking out in this crowd, I'm definitely feeling like the work is finally paying off. As Jaylene mentioned, uh, my name is Michael Quagg, uh, my pronouns are he and him, and I'm a queer settler of Korean descent <clears throat> who is um, privileged to live on Treaty 13. Uh, in Takarano, the traditional lands and home of the Wendat, the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, the Métis, and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. It is a pleasure to welcome you all to the summit and an honor for me to briefly speak to CBRC's commitments and path towards truth and reconciliation, and to specifically re reaffirm our commitment to decolonizing policy and practice in to us LGBTQI plus health, research, programs, and advocacy, which means and includes promoting and supporting two-spirit resurgence. And that also means doing our part to leverage our influence, our power, and our resources as a national to us LGBTQI plus health research organization to support two-spirit and LGBTQIA plus peoples and communities across Turtle Island. Being non-Indigenous and settler-led, CBRC has particularly important responsibilities to decolonization and reconciliation as an essential part of diversity, equity, and inclusion for all sexual and gender minorities. We recognize that this includes the responsibility to work continually and meaningfully to create spaces where Indigenous and Two-Spirit people are included and respected. This journey towards reconciliation was formalized in 2016 when we endorsed the TRC calls to action and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And through the guidance, support, and collaboration provided so generously by the Indigenous and Two-Spirit elders, knowledge keepers, researchers and organizations that CBRC has been so lucky to work with. For the past several years, 
we at CBRC have been so blessed to build on this critical work under the leadership of the Two-Spirit program and team. It is truly a blessing to be able to work with the passionate, hardworking, and values-driven people that make up this team. This includes Martin Moorberg, Lane Bonners, Jaylene McRae, Jesse Dame, and William Flett. And I do want to give them a very big shout out on, on their hugely successful T-Spirit Symposium. Um, before I pass, pass it off to Jesse, uh, Jaylene uh, made a reference to Jesse's new title, and uh, you know I just want to speak to this really important new appointment uh, at CBRC, uh, being this uh, being a newly established uh, director of Two Spirit Health. Uh, Jesse joined CBRC in 2020 as a Two Spirit Program Manager. And in this time, he has played an incredibly important role in the development and growth of the Two-Spirit program, helping to shepherd the team and work so collaboratively with uh, a growing range of partners and communities and stakeholders, and helping to inform and support CBRC's path towards truth and reconciliation. This is the first ever staff leadership position dedicated to Two-Spirit health and communities, and the creation And the creation of this role represents an important and exciting step towards even greater representation of Two-Spirit and Indigenous peoples in our work and for strengthening our reconciliation and decolonization work by working to enhance and advance the voices of Two-Spirit and LGBTQI plus Indigenous peoples both within the organization and the broader work that we do. I hope you will join me and the team at CBRC in supporting Jesse in taking on this important new role at the organization. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Michael. Um, as Michael said, and as you've heard now a couple times, my name is Jesse Dame. I am very proudly to Spirit and Métis. My family is originally from Treaty 1 and Treaty 2 territory, which we know today as Winnipeg and St. Rose de Lac. I'm a certified registered nurse and the new director of Two-Spirit Health. And I am so proud to be here today. I want to acknowledge the <laughs> Auntie Jaylene behind me, of course, but acknowledge the amazingly successful year within the Two-Spirit program. And we've seen our team grow from two to seven. Five times the amount of work though, let me tell you. But some of you may know and have heard, but the last two days the Two-Spirit program hosted a two-day Two-Spirit symposium and over 80 Two-Spirit folks from around Turtle Island joined us to discuss Two-Spirit health and community needs. We got to hear from community about some of the Two-Spirit histories, current work happening in community, and the fight for further Two-Spirit involvement. I wanna take the, this opportunity to truly thank the Two-Spirit elders and knowledge holders in the room, online, and those who could not join us today. We would not be able to do this work if it wasn't for you and all your years of service for the community and dedication to social justice. So thank you. I also feel it is my responsibility to draw attention to today's date. The significance of the date November 16th, 1885. Louis Riel was executed by the Canadian government at only 41 years old for his part in what they referred to as the Riel Rebellion. But what we know today, and especially as Métis people, it was an act of resistance against settler colonialism. <laughs> Throughout 2023, the Two-Spirit pro Program prioritized community outreach and being in space together. We have been able to be in space across Turtle Island and share ceremony with many relatives. In March, we had a huge turnout for our annual Two-Spirit Celebration and Awareness Day, which will be taking place again this year on Spring Equinox in March. In September, our amazing Martin and Jaylene hosted a very powerful Two-Spirit Showcase, one of the evenings at Healing Our Spirits Worldwide. 
During this event, they were able to highlight the amazing power of Two-Spirit people and bring attention to our resurgence worldwide. There was over 200 people in that room. We also got to witness the launch of an Indigenous-led research program led by the amazing Lane, who's actually downstairs working um, the check-in booth, so he's not in enough here with us right now, but it's called Knowledge Seekers. Through the growth of our program, we've been able to lean on each other and support each other to meet our community's needs. Part of this has led to the success of the Medicine Bundle Project, which is our approach to destigmatize sexual health through the inclusion of sexual health supplies in our sacred medicine bundles. This project has also been very successful with the love and dedication of our Medicine Bundle coordinator, William Flett, who's unfortunately not with us today as he's homesick. Um, and we were able to relaunch the Medicine Bundle ordering on October 30th and will be expanding nationwide. Thank you. I want to truly acknowledge the hard work of the Two-Spirit team and the Two-Spirit community. And I'll ask that Martin, Skye, Jaylene, please stand and we'll give them a round of applause again. Thank you. Stand up. Over to Darren. Or to Does everybody feel really great right now? <laughs> this is the thing. It was like one of the, I, like, we can explain what it was like being in the symposium because it's just, it's something that really just comes like to the core of like just feeling really connected. And I feel like it's been such a gift to be able to, um, I always think that one of the things that I really respond to in, in any environment I'm in is kindness and care. Making sure that we care for each other and having leaders like Michael and Jesse speak here, it, it, it's just steeped in such care. I, I feel like I'm seen, I'm heard, I'm one person. So I think that when we are able to multiply that um, by the different um, um, amazing um, people that have chosen to be with us today, that is just an energy that is really something that we need to recognize and, and feel. So I always ask people, how are you feeling right now? And because uh, it's important, you know, we just have right now and we can carry on to that. So no matter what you have going on in your world, for the time today, just let go and experience each other. And that's going to continue on. And that's where I go regularly. And this world hasn't always been easy. But, you know, I do have my medicine. I do have my places where I can go to center my medicine wheel and just get back on track. So that being said, um, I am just um, feeling, so <laughs> you know I'm feeling good. I've already said that. But I feel really excited. And I'm, um, I'm also like excited to you know, welcome to the stage somebody who is, is truly respected with CBRC. And you know, there's like, like an eagle, like we talk in our uh, indigenous, is that we get to fly. And when we are able to um, create and show up and learn and love, we get this strength to soar. And I think our, the, the next person I'm going to welcome to the stage is doing just that. So please warmly welcome Darren Ho. Thank you, Jaylene. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm Darren Ho, Director of Health Services at Health Initiative for Men and formerly Associate Director and Summit Co-Director at CBRC. Uh, first, thank you to Albert, Norman, and Bo for starting us off today. Uh, I'm, I'm going to match Jaylene's energy or try to match Jaylene's energy, but I also have a very brief um, brevity is one of my favorite things. Here we go. I would like to recognize and say thank you to our funders and sponsors for the summit uh, who have made it possible for us to hold this space to get together. So thank you to our presenting partner, Gilead Sciences Canada, as well as our presenting sponsor, Vive Healthcare. Summit is also made possible through project funding from the Public Health Agency of Canada's Community Action Fund. So thank you, PHAC. I'd also like to extend a big and warm thank you to the Summit Programming Committee for guiding the vision and planning for Summit 2023, who this year had the big task of reviewing a record 200 abstracts and submissions to create this year's Summit program. 
As well, I'd like to acknowledge the entire team at CBRC, my old colleagues, uh, for their dedication and support in producing this year's conference. Thank you, CBRC, and thank you, Summit Programming uh, Committee. I also need to, oh yeah, let's clap for them. I also need to thank all of the presenters participating at Summit 2023 who will be sharing their insights and their work through the panel discussions, the workshops, roundtables, and poster presentations included in this year's programming. Without you, Summit would not be possible. So thank you for bringing your work to the forefront of this conference, and thank you for sharing with us your insight on how we can all be doing better for our communities. Thank you, presenters. Okay, the last thing I will say is for today and tomorrow, I hope that we continue to make greater impacts in combating 2S LGBTQ plus stigma and hate. For however much we can drive change on our own, we can accomplish so much more together in action. Thank you. Right.